Navigating through the energies of New Earth is not an easy process and can become extremely overwhelming at times. As we all ascend into higher frequencies, we're all being guided to embrace our own unique divine pathway, a pathway created in the vibration of love. Join Vibe Nation radio host, international psychic medium, Carrie Turcott, as she guides her listeners to rediscover themselves by accessing the keys of knowledge that already exist within. Each week's show is divinely orchestrated to intertwine with the universal energies, allowing the listeners to go deeper within and understand the message being shared even greater. When you live in the frequency of love, there is no competition, so Carrie will be joined regularly by fellow soul family members who will bring forth wisdom and knowledge she knows should be shared on a global level. At the end of each show, Carrie will tap into the energies of the listeners to see what message Spirit wants to share with all those listening in for the upcoming week. If you really want to get to know who you truly are, come and join us now on Vibe Nation Radio, here on the IOM Radio Network. Indian summer here on Vibe Nation. This is Chris Anderson, One Feather, and I am uh, <clears throat> celebrating my Native American ancestry and uh, doing a little chatting as uh, the world continues to revolve and unfold and mystify and surround us with enigma after enigma. My guest today is Dave Fishman, who is a longtime teacher as well as a student of A Course in Miracles, and uh, how are things there on the East Coast, Dave? Well, uh, <laughs> pretty much the same. Uh, uh, it's kind of a mild, sunny day, but uh, as far as events going, it's just like any other day. Uh, every day brings uh, something new, as you know. Yeah, it seems like this entire weekend we were given kind of one shock after another, and uh so do you p- ascribe any actual um, <clears throat> actual uh, significance to the fact that everything seems to be, you know, suddenly amped up and in uh, a high level of turmoil? Well, <clears throat> you know, I guess there's a number of ways of looking at this. Uh, you know, f- you know, in, in science, uh, th- there is the uh, laws of thermodynamics. For every action, there's a reaction, and things are starting to uh, act and react faster and faster. But it, and when it starts to get a little out of hand, uh, sometimes they call it uh, chaotic. Uh, the laws of chaos start to come in. Th- there, is, there's a second law of thermodynamics that actually says. It's the law of entropy, that things are reorganizing from a lower level to a higher order of things. And, and, and that's what I, I truly see, and that's, that's a scientific way of looking at it. From a spiritual point of looking at it, from, from, from uh, how consciousness and, and, and mind and spirit looks at it, all things are happening perfectly, uh, even though... There, there is there's a sense that there is a certain insanity that's going on, uh, and that's probably true if if you're a student of A Course in Miracles or some of the other paths. It says, you know, the world that you're in was a world that was made out of deception, and so therefore the world itself is not sane. Uh, so we, we're all always kind of reacting to the fear that that something is going to happen that is that is not good uh and coming from that thought system uh you're always living in fear but there is another thought system a, a right-minded way of seeing it where where you recognize that all things are happening for the good and this is always true except in the judgment of that ego so basically uh as we move into this somewhat heightened cycle of um, evolution and advance and transformation and change, um, are are you anticipating, you know, a uh, amping up of additional events like this, or do we see this kind of rise to the surface for a short period of time and then uh, become, you know, less active and uh, kind of diminish and go away for a while? 
Well, as you know, I know you you kind of know me pretty well. Uh, uh, my mantra lesson, uh, uh, in A Quest of Miracles, which I use all the time, is Lesson 25. I do not know what anything is for. And, and, and that's pretty much what I'm going to say here. I, I never know what tomorrow is going to bring, but the main thing is to stay present in, in the here and now which 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 is where there, there is no judgment of what's going to happen. Uh, if, as a matter of fact, I'm willing, which I have been developing for a very long time, to develop trust. Uh, you know, there's a line in the Course that kind of gives an answer to some of this. It's in the Teacher's Manual uh, under Trust, which is Section 4, and it says the teachers of God have trust in the world because they've learned it's not governed by the laws that the world made up, which obviously is pretty insane. It's you or me, us or them, theirs or ours. You know, it's always the laws of survival. Now, it's not governed by those laws of survival. It's governed by a power that is in us, but not of us. It's this power that keeps all things safe. It's through this power that the teachers of God look on a forgiven world. And you find that in the teacher's manual of, the Question Miracles, Section 4. Mm-hmm. Well, now, um, the appearance of things and the truth of things are all, you know, pretty much uh, a huge gap, like you had pointed out. Um, but I'm sure there are people who would argue that, uh, well, for example, with your own ancestral line, the Holocaust showed up in, in a very horrific fashion. And there does seem to be some parallels here uh, of another event of that sort occurring. So um, how can we find that that sense of peace, that sense of security, that everything is going to turn out all right uh, eventually? Well, I think faith and and total trust uh, does that for you, and and each person has to have that faith and total trust for themselves. I I can't really give that to anyone else. Each one has to develop it for themselves. And that does take practice. So, you know, if somebody is into just reading the news and, 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 and getting their news from, from from another source, whether it's uh, television or, or, or the, or, or the uh, popular media or, or the social media, it doesn't really matter. If, if that's your source, then then probably you will live in fear because you use the word appear. I, I heard you use the word appear, and 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 like the acronym for fear is false evidence appearing real. So if that's if that's what I'm going to be reacting to, I will be living in fear. And yes, I, I really can't do anything for that person other than to say, you know, ask yourself. What voice is telling me there is something to fear? Because if you're trusting in something greater than yourself, if you're trusting in your in, in your higher self, your 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 God spirit, your divine spirit, there really is nothing to fear. Now this is a fact, but it's not a fact for those people who believe in illusions or dreams or or the social media or 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 anything in this world. It comes from your higher self, your divine self. And uh, how do you um, gain access to the to that sense of that presence of the higher self, and uh, you know, experience that direct communication that uh, gives you the assurance that things are all right, that it's not as it's not what you think it actually is. Now, that's that's a great question, and I'm glad you asked that particular question. Because as I said earlier, it does take practice, 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 practice. It, you know, to develop trust, even in in what it says under trust in the teacher's manual, you know, the, there's about six steps to developing trust, and even at step number five, it says this step alone can take a very long time. So what we're doing is, is we're really Letting go of thinking that we know anything. If you, if you think you know something, you really can't trust because your mind is already closed. So, you know, as the Course says, 
you know, lesson 25, my mantra lesson, just say, I do not know what anything is for. Because the moment you think you know what anything is for, if you think it's good or bad or terrible or a disaster or a terrorist or this, you, you're already judging what it is, and you're not allowing your divine wisdom to speak to you. So as long as you think you have to plan for your safety, you're not listening to wisdom that's given to you when you're willing and willing is such a big word. I have to be willing to say, I do not know. Let me step back and let the truth lead the way. So it's my willingness to allow something greater than myself to lead me safely through the valley of death. And, you know, that's a classic uh, line from, you know, King David about... Uh, moving through that region where fear is uh, um, exercising its its strength, is exercising its muscle. As we're continuing to move forward here, um, do you have a, uh, what's the word for it, do you, do you have any kind of a prediction as to where things are going to shift to next, or are we just, like you said, in a state of total chaos and we have to just live with that? Well, if you're asking me to to kind of uh, uh, take a look at current events and say what's going to happen next, uh, I don't think that anyone really in their right mind would say that they would know what's going to happen next. But I would say that, you know, I, I see some things that, that are, are very uh, inspiring happening in the world that doesn't get in the news. Um my my uh, teaching is well. We have a are you there? brief. Okay. Yeah, All I'm right. here, okay. and we we do, and we'll be right back with Dave. Fishman. Okay. Okay. Very good. Your conscious lifestyle on steroids. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Change and growth are part of natural life, and also part of your spiritual life. Everyone needs support and guidance, especially during life passages. Upgrade yourself with the Ohm Times Experts program. With Ohm Times Experts, you have access to the best intuitive coaches, spiritual teachers, counselors, astrologists, and oracles. Our team was carefully selected so you can trust. Find out more at experts.ohmtimes.com. Aloha. My name is Jennifer O'Neill, and I'd like to invite you to come join me every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Hawaii Standard Time for my show, Spirit Chat. Spirit Chat focuses on simplifying the process of using the spiritual tools and gifts you were born with in a way that fits into your everyday life. I also teach different techniques that will help you learn how to navigate the spirit realm and empower you on your own spiritual journey. So join me this Wednesday as I guide you through the spirit world. How to be a great dad in 15 seconds. Bike ride, go fish, walk in the park, phone call, milkshake, play catch, picnic, fly a kite, tell jokes, laugh, talk, read a story, tell a story, bumper car, swing set, bowling, pillow fight, cut loose, stay tight. Whew. Because the smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Call 877-4DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. And we are back with Dave Fishman, and I had just asked him if he had uh, a sense of where things are going, if he had any kind of a prediction as to the direction things were advancing toward. And so we'll turn it back over to Dave. What do you think? Well, okay. Uh, if we're going to comment on on the uh, on the events of the day, uh, I think we have to look at it from a broader context. Because to just look at the, it's almost like being in a movie theater and you're looking at the screen and you get caught up in the drama and, 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 and the insanity and, 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 and the kind of disastrous events that, that seem to be very fearful. 
But if you remember that that you're watching this in the theater, and, and that in a way, you're not the person that's that's in that movie that you have to, you know, have fear in your heart and, and your palms grow sweaty. But if you remember that you are the awareness, that you are the observer, and you're willing to step back and allow the light to step forward, you, you realize that there is a beginning of this, there is a middle, and there is an end, that all movies have a beginning, a middle, and an end. Dreams have a beginning, a middle, and an end. And you begin to recognize that you're the dreamer of this of this movie. You, you, you dreamt it up, and yes, it is a, it is a dream of fear. There's no two ways about it. But there is another way of seeing it, which is a very loving way of seeing it. And if you see all the people, all the characters as the same, not that there are good guys and bad guys and and, and guys who who shouldn't be there because they don't. They aren't saying the right things to you. As you're willing to take those judgments away, as you remove your own opinions and beliefs and judgments, you're not connected to that movie screen anymore. You're just an observer. And as you begin to include all people and see all people as the same, as equal, you realize that it is a movie and who you are is totally safe. There was one lesson in the course, it's lesson 292 out of the 365 lessons, that says a happy outcome to all things is sure. And I do have total faith and trust that a happy outcome to this movie is certain and sure. And one of the outcomes is to realize that it's a movie, that it's not real. And I know it looks very real, but if you're in a virtual reality movie, of course it's going to look real after all. <laughs> We made it all up. We made the fear. We made the deception. We made the judgments. We did it all. We did it all to ourselves. And that's kind of an astonishing idea, really, is to think that we have that much power to create, you know, something that appears to be so real. So that gets us back to that uh, stepping back and realizing that we're not uh, we're not powerless in the face of all of these changes that we have scripted into this movie that we're watching. Exactly, exactly. I'm I'm so glad to use that that word. We are not powerless. Actually, we're powerful beyond measure. The, the, there's a there's a there's a line in A Quest of Miracles uh, under. Uh, the last unanswered question, it says, you know, can't you see that all your fear, pain, and suffering comes from your strange belief that you are powerless? So if we see ourselves as just this little, small, tiny speck of dust in a world that will certainly step on us and kill us and not, not care about it, if that's what, who we think we are, we are forgetting the power that is given to us. If you remember that, that line I, I, I mentioned from trust, it says teachers of God have trust in the world because they've learned it's not governed by the laws that the world made up. It's governed by a power that is in us but not of us. So it's this power that keeps all things safe. It's through this power that the teachers of God, the, the, the true leadership in this world, can look upon a forgiven world and not see it as something that's going to hurt us or kill us. And of course, you know, the, the words kill and, and slaughterhouse and, you know, even the, holo even the Holocaust, which you mentioned, you know, that, that's, all, that's all the proof of this world is a slaughterhouse, that this, this world doesn't really care about anyone. But that's what we made when we basically made a world and we remembered not to laugh. It was originally a tiny mad joke idea, and then we remembered not to laugh because we already made what we are not. This is not who we are. This this world is not our home. Exactly, and in that process of creating this world, it was it was designed for the self. Uh, apart from God, and when you remove that sense of identity from 
uh, the connection to God, then all of a sudden um, you slide into that place of believing that you are a body. And uh, so we're seeing this uh, era or this cycle um, kind of reinforce that idea that we are bodies and that we can be broken and that we can be crucified um, what is the uh, the remedy, the direct remedy, for that uh, misidentification of being a body instead of being a, a part of God, being completely spirit? Well, I'm glad you asked that particular question. I'm also glad you used the word crucified because that's one of the great misunderstandings of this world. For instance, you know, many people, you know, look at uh, a, a, a man of love who say we call him Jesus, or it doesn't matter whether it's Buddha, or Jesus, or, or or anyone. It really doesn't matter. But and and say, well, you know, why is it that that God allowed his his son to be crucified on a cross, and 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 that instills fear, the, the fear of God. And 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 the funny thing is, there's this wonderful chapter in the Course of Miracles called Awakening to Your Redemption. And it says, as long as you crucify or believe anyone is crucified, as long as you think that your brother is wrong or guilty or something like that, you're the one that's hammering the nails into this person. You're putting the crown of thorns on their head. You're crucifying your brother and yourself. But he says, listen, the message that I came here for is not crucifixion, I use the word crucifixion with the word fiction, spelled fiction, I came for the resurrection. So when you remember the resurrection, you remember that God's son was not crucified. He did overcome the world. And he says, please do not teach that I have died in vain. Rather, teach that I have not, I did not die by demonstrating that I live in you. And if I live in you, you are awake now. Teach that God's Son is saved. Don't talk about the crucifixion. Remember that all of God's children are equal, equal in their worth, always, in eternity. And that that kind of swings around to that whole idea of plurality as opposed to uh, oneness, uh, non-duality. So when we're looking at uh, events like mm, what has happened in Charlotte and what has just recently happened in Africa with um, explosions and bodies being shredded, um, the truth is that since there is only one of us here, since there is no um, mm, there is no division and separation then that uh, event somehow must have an aftershock that is felt in each individual uh, or imagined individual. So all of us are susceptible, I guess, to these events. And how can we nullify that effect, not only for ourselves, but for those around us? Well, Pretty much like the uh, the sign on the airplane that basically says, uh, in case there is uh, really rough weather and we drop the oxygen mask down, uh, put the oxygen mask on, on you first. It's not going to help anyone if you put it on someone else if you're not around. So it's really about each of us is responsible for healing our own mind. You know, when I'm healed, I'm not healed alone, means that when I finally recognize the truth, and enlightenment is actually a recognition. It's not a change. If When I recognize that, that what I am is eternal and see that this is true for all, and then whenever I wish somebody dead, like I wish that person wasn't here and, 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 and we can get rid of them and we can we can kick them out and, and we can exclude them. Whenever I think like that, I, I will live in the same world of fear and chaos and terrorism because I'm really, whatever I'm doing to another, I'm really doing to myself. And that's really the law of God, that, that what I give, I give to myself. There's only like one self here. 
It's not like there's 7 billion cells. If you think there's 7 billion cells, then, then we see ourselves as, as individual separate bodies. And if you think that you're a body, if you identify with bodies, you will live in fear because bodies do die. Whether they die today or in 10 years or 20 years, it's the same thing. Over in the East, where, where, where a lot of the Indian gurus who, who basically talk about non-duality, they actually say when someone passes, they say, oh, he dropped his body. And they don't say he died. He dropped his body. So who we are is spirit who, while we're here in this movie theater, you know, yeah, we, we need to have a, a teaching, learning, communications device. I like that word device. I noticed that even the high-tech companies now, uh, they, they actually use the expression, across all your devices, that this, 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 this Wi-Fi works across all your devices. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it doesn't matter that you're in one device and, and I'm in another device and we're all in different devices. Devices are simply, you know, uh, a teaching, learning device. Uh, we're here to, to teach ourselves what it is that we most need to learn, which is we are one and the same, all created equal. What you're seeing now, whether you're talking about uh, in Charlottesville, Virginia, or anywhere, basically, it, it, it's, the, it's, the, it's the cry of inequality, of injustice, of uh, I want mine instead of I, don't, I want you to have yours. And as long as we believe in inequality and injustice, the world is going to look exactly like this. It's not going to change. The world itself is a canvas, and, 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 and we get to paint on the canvas exactly what it is that, that, that we think is true. If I, if I think that I lack what others have and I want from them what, 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 what belongs to me, the world is going to look like this for a very long, long time. As each of us begins to put that oxygen mask on and begins to breathe in the truth, wisdom, then we won't be acting in fear anymore. And we're going to take a brief break and be right back with uh, Dave Fisher. Free your mind with Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Have you ever wondered how to change your love paradigm? The secret key is finding a love partnership, not just a regular connection. How do you find these? Through conscious relationships. Ascending Hearts Dating is a dating site for people like you that believes in second chances and a different type of spiritual connection. Try Ascending Hearts for free today at AscendingHearts.com and change your love paradigm. Ascending Hearts, the premier dating community for the spiritually awake. Eros Evolution is where sexuality and spirituality meet. Join me, clinical sexologist Martha Tara Lee, on Eros Evolution on Thursdays, 4 p.m. Eastern on Om Times Radio. When Dad needed help getting around, I became his driver. Soon enough, it was up to me to be his housekeeper and financial manager, too. When he moved in, I became his cook and even his nurse. But no matter what roles I play, I know I'm still his daughter. We understand the roles you play. So to help, we created aarp.org slash caregiving, where you can connect with experts and other caregivers. Visit aarp.org slash caregiving. Brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. And we are back, and I'm talking to Dave Fishman about current affairs and looking at it through the lens of A Course in Miracles. <clears throat> so as you were saying, Dave, we, uh, we really can't escape the fact that whatever we perceive in those around us, whatever um, uh, um, judgment that we hold about this person's happy, this person's sad, this person's well, this person's sick, it all ultimately is going to come back and roost somewhere very close by to to where we're at. Um, and that seems to be the most practical way to avoid, um, you know, engaging in the darkness that appears to be going on around us is to not give it support, not affirm it. Is that true? 
Yes, exactly as you say. Uh, yeah. Uh, if if we're going to say, what is the real problem here, rather than than looking at people as problems, it's really our own belief system. And you know, I like to always look at the word belief system as 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 it has every belief has a lie right in the center of it. So so when we're watching this movie and we have a, a tremendous belief that the movie is real and we're caught up in it and, 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 and our heart starts to pound because all of a sudden I'm feeling fear and I'm feeling very unsafe, you know, uh, our, our emotions start to, you know, run us and, 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 and we're actually – uh, at the at, at the expense of, of fearful emotions that, that 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 say we have to stop this. I'm angry. I, I want whoever is responsible for this to pay. Uh, you know, maybe maybe we should impeach him. Maybe we should kick him out. Maybe maybe we should kill the people that that are the terrorists. You know, so it's always something about making the movie more real than it is. It, but, but there's nothing wrong with the movie when we remember that we're watching a movie, we're watching it, we're not the movie itself. It's our willingness to return to a peaceful state, a a quiet, calm, inner peaceful state in which we realize that there is nothing to fear. The fear comes from looking outside at the world and saying, oh, this can hurt me. And whenever you see anything is different from you, you will be afraid of it because it's different, and anything that's different can hurt you. What, what, what we're asked to do in, this, in, in, in taking in this oxygen of wisdom is begin to see that the things that I used to see as different were really not different at all. Maybe in form, maybe in bodies, bodies look different. They have different names, different colors, different religions, different countries, different everything. We put boundaries about around them, and we define them by how we feel about them. But, you know, if an astronaut goes out into outer space and he looks back at Earth, he doesn't see boundaries in He just sees this beautiful blue and green ball, you know, out in the heavens. And, and that's really what we truly are. We are one. But as long as I see that we're two or three or seven billion. You know, it's always going to be me versus you or us versus them. And in that kind of a thought system, there was always something to fear because there's separation. There are differences. And I must start to train my mind to see sameness or oneness. That's the name of my first book. It's called Into Oneness, Thoughts and Prayers Along the Way. Into Oneness. I have another one called the open mind, loving yourself. But, but both of them say the exact same thing. They, they, they are what I teach and what I have learned myself from, from basically 40 years of, of, of sharing and teaching A Course in Miracles. And I, I, I will add, you know, the untrained mind can accomplish nothing. So if I'm speaking to someone who says, well, that sounds like a, a lot of horse, whatever, well, it, it probably is a lot of horse because – no one can give this to you. you. This is something you must give to yourself. It, 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 an untrained mind who is looking at everything as as their, you know, show me, prove it to me, or else I don't believe in it. You already have a belief system that is believing in what you want to believe in. You know, show it to me because I don't believe it. I don't trust you. Well. It's about trusting in your higher self, not in what somebody else says to you. That takes practice. That takes a lot of practice to trust in your higher self. And what are the uh, what does the course give us as far as a format for creating a dialogue with our higher self to even be able to recognize what our higher self is trying to communicate to us? Oh, that's a great question, and, and it says it in so many different places. Uh, again, one of my favorite uh, is my lesson 25. I do not know what anything is for, because it, it, if I think that my purpose is my survival, and you know Charles Darwin and and and, and uh, Richard Dawkins, who who follows up and are now the leader of of that idea that your DNA determines everything, uh, they did have a correct 
in this world, because this world is a world of basically survival of the fittest. There's no two ways about it. And if you live in that kind of a world, you must be willing to defend yourself against that which you do not know, that which is that was different from you. So one of the uh, great lessons uh, outside of I do not know what anything is for is the idea if I defend myself, I'm attacking myself. And, you know, what is it that would need defense except something that thinks it's very small and weak, powerless, a victim, helpless? I must, I must protect myself. We're not talking about protecting yourself with, 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 with guns and, 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 and arrow, bows and arrows and, and shields and, and all kinds of mortar defense. No, we're talking about the thoughts in your mind that, that, that see everybody as, as untrustworthy, as something you cannot trust because they're different from you. And, and as long as you do that, you're separating yourself from yourself, because in truth, we're not different from each other. We are each other. That's the oneness. Into oneness, we we are all the same in truth. Our purpose is the same. We share the same interest, the same goal, the same purpose is to remember the truth of what we are. And then the other lesson that I call the sister lesson, 153, sister of 135, it's in my defenselessness as I lay my arms down, as I, as I stop guarding myself, as I'm willing to, to share myself, to be myself. And, you know, the, the kind of programs that you do, Chris, you know, reminds me of, 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 the, of the kind of things I'm seeing more and more of. I, I, I spend a lot of time, as probably you do, maybe on Facebook. And, you know, in the last year or two, I see more and more people coming on live because because they don't need somebody to tell them what the truth is. They're willing to share from their heart. You know, like I, I think almost every hour there's another 20 people who say, okay, here I am, I want to share live with you. For many years I, I, I was helping people develop that trust in their higher self by, by, by forming what I call spiritual roundtables where people recognize that no one is really sitting at the head of the table. If you think that someone is going to give you what you do what you do not have, you're listening to a voice that's not your friend. That all have the same. We're all equal, all equal. And as you begin to demonstrate your equality by sharing the light and the love in your heart, you become stronger. You, you, whatever you share, you strengthen. You're strengthening yourself. But when you need somebody... You know, there was a guy, I think it was uh, William James, or I could be wrong, a hundred years ago, a philosopher, who said, you know, don't ever be sorry for a democracy who elects their own leaders, their own uh, authority figures, because whoever it is that they elected comes out of their consciousness, their, their, their subconscious. Now, if we say our upset about somebody that's elected, don't be upset. That's what you wanted for right now. The, the, perfect that, the person that is there is the perfect person to represent the subconscious of the people that elected. And the subconscious of the people that elected probably is feeling very angry, very upset, and okay, that's what we have right now. But all things shall pass that is exactly as I see it. This will bring entropy. Always brings a higher order of organization. That's what entropy is. That's yeah. That's really kind of a uh, exciting thought in a lot of ways. You know, once you get past those fear images that you're carrying around about, you know, we're all doomed, um, and you know, there's going to be a bad outcome, and the Earth is going to be turned into uninhabitable nuclear meltdown, uh, once we get those issues off the table and start to look more deeply into what is really going on, uh, we discover that there is uh, a process going on here where we're being forced to look in the mirror. Is that how you would envision it as well? Absolutely. I'm glad you used the word mirror because that's such such a key word uh, in, in my understanding of A Course in Miracles, and I've been doing it a long time, 
And I, I usually say, and I, 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 I usually say, for me, the course starts in chapter 21. Even though there's 31 chapters, I say the course for me starts in chapter 21 because that's the first time it says in the introduction, projection makes perception. The world that you see is nothing more than an outside picture or an outside mirror of your own inward condition. So it's our subconscious that is that is projected out. And what we're seeing, and yes, in this in this virtual reality movie, you know, each person that we see, whether they're sitting in the Oval Office or they're sitting in the Pentagon or they're sitting in, in Africa or Europe or Asia or North, or North Korea, they're just outward projections of our own inner condition. And yet there is a part of us that basically is insane. There's no two ways about it. If you're in a body and you think that you're a body, there's a part of you that is insane because we're not bodies. We, who we are is eternal spirit. But as long as you identify with something that you're not, that basically is what insanity is, you know, trying to make something sane out of what you are not. That's like, that's like putting your head in the garbage pail and trying to figure out, you know, how to solve the problem. No, it's like garbage in, garbage out with the original computer program is new. If you program something by mistake and you think it's real, then you have to debug the program. And you, either that or you delete the program or you do system restore, you reboot, you know, you get yourself back to source. Of course, one of the most popular ideas in The Course in Miracles is an idea cannot leave its source. We never did leave home. We are in our sane mind. We have to remember what part of our mind is sane by actually choosing it again and again in every moment of now. And that, uh, that is the, the avenue to resolution. We'll be right back for uh, more discussion with Dave Fishman. the best of the conscious minds in the world. Om Times Radio, your conscious lifestyle on steroids. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Om Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Om Times endeavor. Host your show with Om Times Radio Network. Tune in to the Practical Intuitive. Mind, Body, Spirit for the Real World, with me, host Robin Fritz, Mondays at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 Eastern. I'll cover personal and business intuition, animal communication, mediumship, space clearing, past life regression, shamanic insights, energy healing, soul choice, and more, all to help you tap your own intuitive and healing skills. No ifs, ands, or buts. Hello, I'm John Lithgow. Manatees are unique among the most amazing animals on Earth, but they're endangered. We pose the greatest threat to their survival. Many manatees are killed or injured by boats or other recreational activities. I'm a writer of children's books, including one about manatees, and I believe education is the key. You can be part of the solution. Please contact Save the Manatee Club right now. Call 1-800-432-JOIN. Thank you. And I am back with Dave Fishman, and we're <clears throat> having a chat about current times and how all of the scary stuff is uh, giving a lot of people uh, nightmares and causing a, a lot of indigestion, not able to to properly digest your food because your stomach's all clenched up, and all these different uh, uh, secondary phenomena that is associated with this idea of fear, and that's the next place I want to go with our discussion here, Dave, is where does the fear come from? I mean, everybody wakes up and has a sense of fear that they have to stop and address when they start their day. Fear seems to be the 
the underlying emotion in this realm. Where did that fear come from? Well, that's a great question. Uh, you know, the secret of, of, of undoing this fear is that I'm doing this to myself. Uh, if you think that something outside of you is doing something to you, there's no way that you can let go of the fear because there's always something outside of you. But when you're willing to bring it back to what's within you, remember we said the world you see is nothing more than an outside picture or a mirror of your own inward condition. So if you're afraid of something outside of you, you're looking in the wrong place to alleviate the fear. Actually, uh, there's, a, there's an expression in the Chorus that says that, that, that salvation or, or truth, is your happiest accomplishment because it's the only thing that has any meaning to you in this entire world because it's the only thing that has any real use to you at all. So if you really want the truth, instead of looking out into the mirror or in, onto the movie screen or, or looking at the, at the morning news, newspaper, or social media, streaming media, I don't care what you're looking at. If you're looking outside of you, you will always have a reason to be, oh, one day it's sunny and the next day it's stormy and a hurricane's coming, there's a monsoon coming your way, there's a tornado, there's a cyclone, you got to head for cover. That's the way the world is. And I use the word is because, you know, we made a world out of deception. The, the, the idea of truth and and salvation is, is another way of, of recognizing that what we think is true is not true. That as a matter of fact, this is not our home, that we are at home safe now. We, we are perfectly cared for now. We're always perfectly cared for. The thought that we're all alone, that we're doing this ourselves. You know, that will cause a lot of fear. If, if you think that you're alone and you have to save yourself and you have to defend yourself and you have to protect yourself, you're living in fear. And, 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 and fear is like a suit of armor. You, you're weighed down by, by the gravity of, of, of thinking it's so real. I, I really like lesson number one and two of the course. I know people who have not done the course probably say, well, that sounds crazy. But for me, after doing the entire course and go back to lesson one and start all over again, it's really the truth. It says nothing I see here really means anything. But the lesson two, the next day, it says, well, well, listen, David, just in case you think that anything here means anything, just remember you are the one that gives it all the meaning it has for you. If you're sitting in a movie theater, and you forget that you paid a good price, a price of admission, to get into that theater to watch this movie, and you forget that you're sitting in the theater because the movie seems so real. In fact, it's surreal. <laughs> uh, it's, it's virtual reality. Uh, you, you know, you put on those virtual reality goggles here only like uh, 50 years after uh, the word virtual reality came into existence uh, 20 years after computers were invented. Well, uh, can you imagine 500 or 1,000 years from now what virtual reality will look like? It looks like right here, right now. And if you think that this is real, well, you have a lot to be afraid of. But only you can train your mind to see things differently. You know, there's a lesson 28, which I think says it all. It says, above all else, I'm determined to see things differently. So if you want to let go of fear and you want to remember the truth of what you are, you must be determined above all else to see things differently. Because if you see things as different from you, as separate from you, you're going to live in fear for a very long time. But as you start to train your mind to see things as the same, not in form, but in quality, in content, that we all share the same interest, the same goal, the same purpose, that we really all want the peace of God. We all, we all want the same peace of mind. We all want to remember that we're safe, that death is not real. Then you're going to do the work that it takes to start to 
live and see things differently than you have in the past. Today is the first day of the rest of your life, right here, right now. That is so very true. <clears throat> I I remember reading uh, an account of uh, <clears throat> a kid who was seven or eight years old, and he picked up a snake and uh, misidentified it. It was uh, <clears throat> a uh, copperhead, and he thought it was a different type of snake, and he carried it around all summer and, and into autumn, and, uh, <clears throat> you know, all of a sudden... Somebody came along and says, oh, my God, that's a copperhead. And uh, everything went upside down, and he dropped the snake and ran away from it. But he had had that snake as his companion, as his friend, for an extended period of time. And I found that so fascinating that a lot of times that really is a parallel as to what our life is. It's all belief, whatever we believe. You know, as Jesus said, you know, whatsoever man thinketh, uh, so is he. Our beliefs about ourselves are so powerful that they can generate a reality that, um, you know, that that appears to be um, amazingly and profoundly beyond the realm of just the normal day-to-day experience. That's so true. Thank you so much, Chris, for that for that uh, 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 metaphor. Because uh, belief is very powerful. The mind is very powerful. We have no respect for our own mind. We we have all this, these beliefs about what's good and what's bad, what's right, what's wrong, what's sinful, who who's guilty, who should be punished. Those beliefs are actually punishing ourselves. When when it says you know, stop crucifying yourself. Nobody thinks of themselves as being nailed to a cross. But every day in our belief system, we are crucifying ourselves by crucifying others. As you see others, you will see yourself. As you think of others, you'll think of yourself. As you treat others, you treat yourself. That's the idea of being of one mind, sharing the same purpose. Purpose is of mind. By the way, that's the name of my foundation, the One Mind Foundation, if you go there. Uh, for those people who would like to have, like, a, uh, I, I have a thing called the, the, the 12 Core Themes of A Course in Miracles. It's called the 12 uh, uh, Simple Steps to Awakening. And you can go there if you want. Uh, please, you know, we are a, a, a not-for-profit uh, uh, foundation, and we look to empower all people to empower themselves. I, I cannot empower you. Only you can empower yourself. So so please go to OneMindFoundation.org. Yes, absolutely. And uh, I have a website, uh, www.TheMiracleWithin, and Dave is featured on the resources page there. And uh, <clears throat> so... Uh, You've got a lot of resource to come out of the the stupor and the powerful, uh, powerless state of self-image that you know that you're compelled to express every day when you get up in the in the morning and look in that mirror and you know see <clears throat> see the attrition of the years and the sagging skin and all of those things that are so <clears throat> validating of our our belief that we are powerless and uh, so you know the fastest way to make a change is to be willing to make the change I don't think there's any other way that it's going to happen until you get to that point where you can say I'm miserable I want to change so Dave in kind of in summation here anything that you would like to really put a little extra highlight on from our discussion today uh only that that each of us is responsible for our own awakening, our own healing, our own remembering of the truth. That that you can't get this from somebody else. Because if you if you think that you can sit at somebody's feet and learn from them, th- th- then you're still into a belief system that somebody has something that I do not have. That is not true. That we are all the equal equal children of God, the children of, of the one creator of the universe, and that we all have the same. So 
You can't find that by going out and listening to other people give it to you. That's just another belief system. You have to start to look within, exactly as, as your website, to look within to the truth within you. And, yes, at first you'll, you'll see a lot of falsities, things that, that, that you believe to be true, that, that basically weren't true. And, and, and those are the things that are, are the things that keep us in fear. But as you, it's kind of like weeding out the weeds from a garden. As you pull the weeds out, you start to see what was really there is the beauty of the flowers. We never really left the Garden of Eden. We have always been at home. No one ever kicked us out. We were always in the garden. We just grew a lot of weeds. The weeds are our belief system. Right. And um, just uh, our last-minute thought on what's what's going to happen next what we can expect next as far as uh, this uh, this unfolding of life in our surroundings all things is going to be perfectly good all things happen for the good all things happen for, i don't care what it is it happens for the good for all that is always the truth great thanks so much dave it was a delight chatting with you and next week we'll have more information on how to get out of the mess that you think you're in. Okay, thank you so much. Bye now. Bye, Chris.